evening everybody great to be with you tonight as we're continuing um, through uh, the second letter of Peter in the New Testament um, according to the Moravian daily uh, readings that pattern that we follow and it's chapter 1 uh, from verse 12 through to 21 the end of the chapter um, for us today um, and you know as you might expect in in the conclusion of the chapter um, it is um, a continuation of, of some of his thought uh, from earlier. Um, but in addition to that, um, we're going to see a couple of the, the main themes of, of this letter um, emerging um, as, as, as we go on. Um, and those uh, big themes really are, um, for Peter, um, he's very conscious of um, affirming true biblical prophecy as opposed to the, the, the false prophecy or false teaching um, that was around in his day. Um, and, and then to really kind of bring that into sharp focus, he compares also and contrasts um, the, the, the myths and the, 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 you know, the, the kind of the, the legends, as it were, um, that were being peddled by many with the gospel, um, which he says is no myth. Um, and, and this is a really significant thing for Peter, again, really similar to many of the other um, New Testament letters. Um, people get captivated by false gospels, false prophetic teaching, and false teaching of all different varieties. Um, it's always been the same, and um, I, I guess it ever will be the same until Jesus comes again. And uh, and that, that point there being really another strong um, message of this letter. The time is short, but Jesus is coming again. And, um, you know, some will see that day, others will not. Um, Peter, in these verses, is convinced that he will be dying soon. He says, um, and this whole passage is quite poetic, but he says quite poetically, I, I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. Um, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at all at any time to recall these things. Um, the putting off of the body. Um, now, that's not to decry the body or to demean it at all. Peter um, makes clear in his writings he believes in the resurrection of the body as much as anybody. Um, what does he um, know here? Is he is he sensing something in his circumstances? Maybe, but he says, as the Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me, it's perhaps, it's possible that the Holy Spirit was um, illuminating his present circumstances. But he might be thinking more back to like John twenty one, um, and that initial moment of of restoration and recommissioning with Jesus um, after the resurrection. Um, it was a very profound encounter for Peter, who had denied Christ three times. Now this um, call to affirm Christ three times um, and, and affirm his his position um, in God's purposes. Um, you know, it it would it would resonate through everything that you ever did, wouldn't it? If you'd had such an encounter with Christ, um, so the true gospel as opposed to myths true pop prophecy as opposed to false prophecy um, and, and and how important it is that we get these things right knowing that our lives are short and indeed all um, history is drawing to its um, conclusion in the coming again of Christ um, which um, it, it, you know is is, is so important in Peter's thinking and in his writing. Now, um, within all of this, um, Peter, um, as we've seen just already, is making reference to his personal encounter with Christ. So, if we understand verse 14 to be referencing that, that, that restoration moment with Jesus on the beach, um, as, as Peter is restored uh, by Jesus and it would seem a good interpretation of that. And he's, he's referencing that moment of encounter with the risen Christ. Um, later on, when he's um, when he's rebutting cleverly devised myths, he does so um, by saying he was eyewitnesses of the majesty 
of Jesus. And remember, right at the beginning of this letter, he tells us plainly Jesus is God. And he's seen the majesty of God with Jesus, which is why he, he declares it. He says, For when he received honour and glory from God the Father, and the voice borne to him by the majestic glory. That's beautiful, isn't it? Majestic glory, probably rendered with capital letters. It's, it's a, a, like a title being given to God here. Um, and then the words, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Peter says, We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Um, so it's referencing two moments of encounter the transfiguration as we call it this revelation of the glory of God and the, 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 the speaking of the, the words of affirmation by the Father over the Son and then the, the risen um, moment of restoration with Jesus now we've already had Peter at the beginning of the letter say um, you, you know your faith is of equal standing you know, if, if, if it's a confirmed call um, to faith in Jesus. And here he's, he's going to, he's exhorting us um, into the truth of the gospel. Now, again, you know, we might feel it within ourselves. Well, that's nice for you, Peter, but I didn't walk on the beach with the risen Jesus after a breakfast of bread and fish. And um, I, I wasn't there on the mountain of transfiguration with you, James and John. Um, why is Peter, um, you know, evidencing these truths with experiences which were so particular and profound to him? You know, is he elevating himself or distancing himself from the rest of us? Well, actually, not at all. Um, what he's doing is he's seeking with what he believes to be his closing days and final breaths to pass on everything that he has received to others. Um you remember how Paul told Timothy that he was to um, that he was to teach faithful men the things that Paul had taught Timothy, so that they could then pass it on to the next generation. This is the way of the Christian faith. We don't say, "I wish I had what somebody else had." We 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 receive what uh, you know every saint before us is able to give to us, and then we pass it on. Um, Peter clearly believes when he says. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. And then again, he says, I think it right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of reminder. Um, and then in verse 19, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Um, he's desperately trying to impart these things to others. Peter is not somebody who's saying, oh, get me. You know, there I had these profound encounters with Christ and you didn't. He's saying, yes, I had these profound encounters with Christ as a gift, and I want to give you that gift. He wants to put it into the heart uh, of his hearers, of his readers. And, and I, I wonder, um, as, as a Christian, um, do you pay careful attention to um, what has been um, passed on to you? Um, you know, when we hear testimony, when, I mean, do you read Christian biography? Um, do you read other people's experiences of Christ? Do you drink in these things and allow them to be almost part of your own experience, your own sense of encountering with God that, that spurs you on, um, that, that stirs you up as Peter is trying to do here? Drink in what is being passed on to you um, and then and then be, be yourself then yearning for your own um, encounter. Take it seriously. Take seriously the scriptures, the stories, the testimonies, the community of faith. Drink it all in and you will find that you're then the kind of person who will be having your own profound um, understandings of the Bible and your own profound encounters with the Holy Spirit that you're able to, to pass on to others. Look, this is the will of God for his church, the will of the Holy Spirit. Um, as, as Peter tells us here, he says no prophecy, um, no revelation from God that teaches and equips and exhorts. No prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Here is Peter speaking from God as carried along by the Holy Spirit, speaking the wonders of his experience of God. And he's longing for you and for me to be stirred up by them. 
um, to pursue these things for ourselves, um, to, to pay attention, he's, he says, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Um, drink it in until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Come on. Should we thank God for these things? Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for Peter. We thank you um, for his encounters with you, his walk with you. Uh, we thank you for things like the transfiguration, the majestic glory of God uh, revealed. Um, we weren't there, but we read of it and we hear Peter speak of it and it almost feels like we were there uh, because the Holy Spirit is carrying him along in his words that have been brought to us. God, we pray that we would drink deep of the Christian experience uh, from the moment of your coming, Christ, until the moment of your coming again. Lord Jesus, we need this lamp shining in the darkness. Uh, we need the words of, 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 the, of the prophetic as opposed to the false prophecy. We need the gospel as opposed to cleverly devised myths. We need you, Jesus. And so we resolve to drink deeply of you, to speak of you one to another, to encourage one another in the faith, to stir one another up. Peter said, I'm going to keep on reminding you with every last breath that I've got. Jesus, let that be said of us. Not that we think of you as an afterthought or you're just a Sunday topic of conversation. Jesus, that we're drinking deep of you and passing you on and encouraging one another in what our experience of encounter has been. Lord Jesus, for a community of faith that is passionate about the majestic glory of our God. Oh, what a profoundly powerful community that would be. Help us, God. Excite us. I ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, go and excite someone about Jesus. I think it's pretty clear, isn't it? Um, with every breath you've got, excite someone about Jesus. Tell someone your story. God bless you. Good night.